wrong? Too old for this. <laughs> Sick of working on my knees. And... What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna build something better. Nice. Hey everybody, I'm Justin. Welcome to our channel. Today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this raised garden bed. We will have plans available in different sizes. I'll have a link in the description below and at the end of the video. So I designed this table to be 36 inches tall and it's four feet wide by four feet wide and it can hold up to a depth of 16 and a half inches of soil. So that soil depth is really good if you want plant tomatoes or things that have a really deep root. So the main three tools that you're going to need for this project are the following. You're gonna need a circular saw, a pocket hole jig, and then you're going to need a nice hammer drill to screw in all these screws. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut these legs to length. I'm using a cedar four x four as the legs on all four corners. And I'm using my speed square to be able to set the lines because because it's gonna be three and a half inches deep, I'm gonna have to make multiple cuts in order to get this cut. Must have some moisture in it because it's really smoking. All right, so I'm just gonna cut those other two pieces. So real quick, I'm just going to make sure this edge is square. I'm gonna take my circular saw and square it off. So now I'm gonna cut all these two by sixes down for all the boards on the sides. All right, so I got four legs and then I've got all four sides. All right, so here's my Craig jig and here's my drill bit. I need to set it, the depth of it, to be for an inch and a half board. And this right here, as long as that's set with that set screw to that depth, it'll provide enough wood to be able to screw the screw into the board and still have something to hold on to. So my drill bit's set, and now I have um, this little board here. It's about an inch and a half offset. I'm gonna put three pocket holes at the end of each board. So with those settings, it puts the screw right in the middle of the end of the board into the leg that is So as long as I have it kind of offset like this on each side, um, when the two boards come together, the pocket holes over here are going to be a little bit higher, and so the screws aren't going to get in the way of each other. And I'm actually trying to find the nicer side to put on the outside. Sometimes you get this where it's the kind of side of the trunk of the tree, and just I think it looks a little bit better to have that square edge on the side. So I'm using these three inch deck screws instead of the Craig jig screws. I'm just not sure if they're made for outdoors. These are, these are deck screws, so they're coated and I'm gonna see if this will work inside this pocket. All right, well, I'm gonna have to see if I can get a longer one of these in order to get those in and out. All right, in order to use this in my pocket hole, um, I bought some bought some two inch drill bits and I might need this too as well, just to extend it out a little bit so I can get in that hole deep enough. Let's try it out. Be nice if it was a little bit longer. This thing kind of gets in the way, but it's better than having that in the way. But that's how it works. So I could do that with all these three boards. And I, I leveled this up because I want this flush. The other board's gonna come flush up against this side, but I want to make sure I don't have a big enough clamp 
to be able to hold this tight. So what I'm gonna do is raise it up and then I'm using this post to kind of push up against it. And then I'll put my knee on it and screw it in so it's nice. And All right, now we got three sides. Let's do one more. So these four boards for the trim on the bottom, they also act as um, support for the boards that are going to go across this and hold the soil. Now that I have these cut to length, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this and 45 each of these corners so that I can just screw those, so I can screw all of these boards to the bottom of this board right here. So I'm gonna offset this just a little bit, about a half an inch from these other boards, just I think it'll look nice. And then that gives me about an inch and a half on this other side, so I can just sit those other boards on top of this when I flip it over. All right, so far so good. This is looking really good. It's nice and strong and sturdy. And once all the soil's in there, I don't think we're gonna have to anchor it down to the ground. It's gonna be heavy enough to stay put. So now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to trim around the top and then work on the inside. So I have a link to the plans in the description below and at the end of the video. Just know that I'm thinking about your knees and your back. Whoa, that scared me a little. You're scared me! I've got all my bottom planks now. So what I'm gonna do is drill some holes, two holes in each end on all these that way, if I pre-drill these, they won't crack and split out. So I decided I'm gonna put some more screws on this top plate just to make sure it's nice and strong. So when we move it, it's not gonna come apart. I'll have about 10 screws per board on the top trim. So I'm gonna use 100 grit sandpaper on my orbital disc sander and go around the whole thing real quick sand off some of these rough spots and make it nice and smooth and then I'll be able to apply stain to it. Now that it's all sanded, I'm gonna stain it with Penafin Penetrating Oil Finish. This is the same product I used on the deck video when I restored that. You could see that video right here uh, if you wanna check that out after this video. I'm going to put on a couple layers of it and it should bring out the color of the redwood and make it look really nice. So I'm only going to be staining the outside of it. I'm not going to worry about the inside. Um, maybe just on the top trim, but that's about, that's about it. I don't want the soil coming in contact with this. Um, it's mainly for looks on the outside of it. Now this is redwood here, here, and here. This is actually a cedar post. It's a better post. Um, than a redwood because it'll it'll last longer with uh, bugs and sitting in the soil stuff like that. So you need to wipe off all the extra stuff within about 20-30 minutes um, between your coats. So I'm gonna probably do one more coat of oil after I do the whole thing once. 
All right, we got this leveled off as best as we can in the spot that it's going to be at. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the boards that need to go in here, fill that up, and then I have one board that's gonna go across and all the boards are gonna be screwed to that from up underneath. So I'm gonna put some screws here through that beam. And do the same thing on the other side. I also added more screws. Um, these are about six inches apart on this trim piece right here because this is gonna be holding a lot of the weight of the soil. All right, so we're gonna do the, the test. Drink the test. This thing is solid. What I need to do, put some water in here, and make a little hot tub. That, that'd be nice. Maybe next time. So now I gotta think of what am I gonna plant in this garden bed? I'm gonna have to ask the kids, ask Cassidy, see what she wants to grow. So let me know in the comments below, what would you grow in a grow box like this? For the garden grids, I ripped down some leftover redwood pieces. These grids are for the square foot gardening. So this is meant to be a square foot garden. And that's why these grids are so important to help you utilize all the space and get the best bang for your buck for this garden. This worked out pretty good to put a little staple there in between all of them to hold that in place. And I will leave a link in the description of the book that I'm gonna use as my planting guide. All right, there it is in all its glory. Fabulous, all ready for plants. I guess I don't need to talk in B-roll, but I just can't help it because it looks so good. Just a reminder, we do have plans available and they're right here. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our DIY projects. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.